those who work their land will have abundant food, but those who chase fantasy have no sense. We need to work our land. I will now talk to the ladies again. Hello? Hello. And throw away those nails. Hello? <laughs> Touch your soil. So it's wonderful. It's a joy to be here at SU this afternoon to share on the subject I've entitled Introduction to Avocado Farming, the Commercial Value of Avocados. I'm a trained civil engineer and may be wondering why I'm a farmer today. And I will explain. There's one verse in the scriptures from Genesis chapter 1 verse 29. Do we have anyone who knows that verse by heart? I that you should know that this. <laughs> the Bible says, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth with fruit and seed in it. It will be yours for food. Genesis 1.29. This is the verse that began my journey in farming. And uh, for many years now, I've been a seed collector. I collect seeds, and I'm fascinated by what happens when you get a seed, single seed, say purple seed, put it uh, in the soil, mix it with water, a little of manure. In 12 months, a purple seed will give you no less than 20 fruits. Pick one of those uh, 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 purple, purple fruit. In fact, I like that your dad brought two days ago to our place about eight big purples. They grow lovely purples. You should go and see the, the periods. We are enjoying them. you find in one purple fruit, there will be more than 300 seeds. Hello. hello, when I say hello, you also say hello. Then I know we are together. Hello. hello. Very good. You can imagine now you have 300 seeds. And there are 20 purples. 20 times 300, is that much? 6,000 6, potential seeds from one tree. If you picked those seeds and planted them, what will happen in 12 months? The multiplication begins to become confusing, isn't it? <laughs> becomes exponential. This leads to the conclusion that the Lord created the world of abundance. And that verse in Genesis 1.29 is true. I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth with seed in it. It will be yours for food. The Lord has provided. And what we are expected to do is to plant. Can see? Okay. You will get the fruit. And the beauty with the uh, uh, tree crops, they are generational investments. Unlike planting tomatoes or cabbages or rape, they'll give you uh, fruit over, the many, over many years. And I've come to this conclusion personally. And if I was given an opportunity to become the president of this country, I'll issue a decree. <laughs> and the decree will be such that every home 
must plant minimum 10 different fruit trees. And I tell you, it's amazing. At our place, we have about 25 different fruit trees. And it's amazing, every season, you have a different fruit you are eating. So that's the dec decree in the making. Hello? Hello. And its impact is amazing over generations. Just that single decision. It's amazing. So we are encouraging uh, planting of fruit tree, and in this case, avocados. <coughs> I grew up on the copper belt. And, and we never paid attention to, the, the, they just used to drop and so on. Th this is a green god. We have in excess of 14 different products you can make out of avocados. Avocado oil. Avocado air oil. Shampoo. Face mask. And we also do make even ice cream. Several other products. From one single fruit. Do we have ladies here? Can they put up their hands so I see them? <laughs> wonderful. These are wonderful people. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> You make, uh, you get your avocado, the rice one. Hello? Hello. You blend it. You get natural yogurt. You pour it there. And some honey. And squeezing some lemon. You have your avocado face now. Hello? Hello? And you put it on the screen and it's amazing things happen. So I've given you what one thing you can do with avocados. <laughs> and in Harrods in the UK, a hundred gram of that recipe of avocado uh, face mask cost forty dollars. <laughs> the house avocado we are promoting, the average weight. The minimum required for international export is 250 grams. Then you remove the, 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 the seed and the pulp, comes to say 200. 200 grams divided by 40. How much? It's how much? It's five. What is the implication of that concerning the face mask I talked about? Uh, and what's the price on the market here of an average avocado here? How much is it? Five to twenty, somewhere there, isn't it? But with just a bit of value addition, you convert something that is twenty quarter. To over fifty to fifty dollars, and on a tree when it matures, the husk when it matures, you get a minimum of five hundred fruits. Hello, Hello. five hundred fruits times fifty dollars. How much? Are we together? <laughs> so this is very serious business. That's why we are promoting it. In this presentation, <coughs> I'll show you 
how Zambia is well positioned to participate in the global market of avocado farming. Because the latitudes, remember geography, we are just in the right latitudes where these things grow. It has many value added products like I've already demonstrated. And the market, the, 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 the demand outstri outstrip the supply. I love this verse. Those who work their land will have abundant food, but those who chase fantasy have no sense. We need to work our land. I will now talk to the ladies again. Hello? Hello. And throw away those nails. Hello? <laughs> Touch your soil. So it's wonderful. So is a living organism. It's lovely. And this shows uh, our map of Zambia, and uh, I'll share a bit about the history of hearth cultivation in Zambia. It's been in Zambia for more than 25 years, are you aware? But it's one of those kept secret by a few people in Yukasama and a few other places. Unlike Kenya, Kenya democratized the growing of avocados. They made, they made it available even to uh, uh, my grandmother in Kinsari. You plant 10 trees, and when they are ready, who we'll come and pick from you, you aggregate with the cooperative. And today, Kenya leads Africa in the production of avocados, and globally, they're number eight. And for those of you who did geography, you know that the size of Kenya and, the, and Zambia, which country is bigger? <laughs> They don't even have a Zambezi river. <laughs> Kafue river. Wangwa river. Zambezi river. Bangwe Ulu. Hello? Hello. They are, yes, they are on top of a park. And you know Kenya was known for tea farming and coffee. They are uprooting those trees and replacing them with the avocados. Because of myriads of uses in the cosmetic industry. But here we kept it to a few people. In our usual fashion, we must repent. Because the Bible is very instructive. It says, a generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others, he himself will refresh. Remember the mathematics we did about seeds, isn't it? And our one seed, 300 in a year, isn't it? From one, and then you multiply. This is a word of abundance the Lord created. There is enough for everyone. There is enough for everyone. Much more than we need. So we also, over the years, have had the Avocado Growers Association of Zambia that pioneered what we are picking up now. So it's an association that had a project uh, more than 10 years in the Cassis area began helping farmers to grow hass avocados. And, uh, and we now have the Avocado uh, Cooperative Union of Zambia with engineer Patrick Mutunushi as our chairman. He is a fine engineer. He used to be the director general for Zikta until some time last year, just before elections. <coughs> and I can guess why he was removed. Remember what happened on the election day? Yes. We had that uh, blackout of internet, eh? He wouldn't have agreed to that. <laughs> He's not the type. He's doing uh, avocado farming. He's been my teacher. And he had his first fruits this year. 
And early this month, I worked with him and we made some avocado oil from the fruits he brought from his farm. So we formed a cooperative, the Lusaka Avocado Mad Peoples Cooperative. And our aim is to be the leading producer of quality avocados. We have now in excess of 450 members, and, and each member buys shares into it. The shares are worth 1,000, one share. Each member is entitled to 10 shares, which is 10,000. And we are using that money to invest in the Kawambwa farm that we acquired last year. We got a 750 hectare <coughs> farm from Chief Munkanta. And you may ask me why Kawambwa? How many of you have been to Kawambwa here? Wonderful. It's a lovely place. Things just grow there. Are you aware that in Kawamba they also grow pineapples? Big pineapples. Pineapple is one of the things we are also going to grow as a cooperative uh, to raise cash flow during the short term period because the avocados only come in three years. Pineapple is one of the things we are working on. Pictures are small. We've done a fruit forecast over the years from now to 2027 in terms of tonnage that we are expected to get. And uh, we already have a market outside of them. What we don't have are enough farmers to meet those requirements. So we've done that through our strategic plan that we launched late last year in December. And we had the opportunity of the Minister of Agriculture come to, to launch it. Okay. There are some landmark uh, uh, achievements that we've made. You can see some spelling from Chinsari there, achievements there. Eh? <laughs> well, the Tembo can confess and agree to that. <laughs> In the early 80s, I was under his tutelage, being taught at Chinsalembe. And the subject that troubled me the most was English language. That's why I studied engineering. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write a composition and it grow. We had this uh, uh, English teacher, Mr. Brooker from, from England. I take my composition and then he marks it. It will come red everywhere. <laughs> and each time I was in an English classroom, I would just lose confidence. You know, this, this Kasabia used to trouble me. <laughs> and I'm wondering why we insist on teaching people English. <laughs> and also as, a, as one of the qualifications to go to university. Why, why can't we change? I don't think it's necessary. <laughs> <laughs> I almost did not go to invest because of English. Then you wouldn't have had a civil engineer, don't you think so? <laughs> <laughs> so those are the landmark uh, achievements we've uh, made. <clears throat> Last month we signed a letter of intent with Vanda One for the export of avocado oil to Italy. 22,000 kilograms per month. Last year we did sign also for the export of avocados, 960 tons per month into Italy. And we just had our, one of our board members last month participate in the fruit fair in Italy. Uh, and when he came back, we, we concluded this uh, 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 deal. And, and we are yet to also conclude some deals out of uh, Dubai and Saudi Arabia that we are working on for the export of the fruit. fruit. 
What then are the benefits of joining the Lusaka Avocado Cooperative? Technical input, farm tours, access to markets will buy the fruit from you so you have an assured market. And we are working on a solar irrigation system for our members and also helping them to have their farms certified so that they meet the global gap certification requirements. These are international rules for market participants. And of course we are doing the pooling of resources to enable us to develop the Kawamba farm we are working on. Also on the group uh, life uh, group insurance for avocado farmers. We had somebody last week 600 plants a farmer in Mumbwa, Mumbwa area. Fire just went and ravaged the entire the entire farm because the fire break wasn't done properly and then without insurance you lose. Do not invest without insurance. I remember when we used to grow uh, bananas in Kitwe. That year we had frost. You know, bananas and frost are not good friends. They get burnt and as if you've passed fire. We had frost, I think 210, 209. I can't remember the year then. Most farmers suffered repairable damages. Frost is terrible. Frost comes when the temperatures are between 6 to 0 degrees. And at our farm in Kitwe, temperatures reach at 0 degrees in July. Hello, did you know that we get 0 degrees in Zambia? Mm -hmm. Ganaton does on Mwambashi River. 0 degrees. At that point, bananas can't survive. What saved us was the insurance, and uh, we called them, and they were able to, to pay, so uh, you mitigate the losses. That was when we were launching with the Minister of uh, Agriculture, we were launching the strategic plan in December last year. With the, with the chief, this is the chief of Kamwa Kawamba who gave us the, the farmland. <laughs> chief Munkanta is very generous. <clears throat> this was when we attended a workshop org organized by ZDA, Zambia Development Agents, and ZF, Zambia uh, Development Fund. They finance uh, uh, companies and organizations involved in the export of. Uh, whatever products, non-traditional products. So we, we are quoting them for that, so that we can prepare uh, the market participants for export. That was when they were exporting at the airport there. This was when we signed the, with the Italian firm. So the, the soil analysis is key, and then you can do now soil preparation and land preparation. And the spacing we are using is five meters apart, and in a hectare, a hectare is 100 by 100, you are able to get 400 plants spaced at five meters. It's important that you have irrigation system, and the rains go so you continue so that you are able to get the right size of the fruit, minimum 250 grams. Irrigation is critical. And we are also encouraging use of, uh, use of um, organic fertilizers. In terms of how we are positioned for avocado farming, I did talk about briefly, the, the, we are in the right altitude, latitude, and the rainfall is well distributed, and the northern part of Zambia is excellent. Copper Belt, Luapula, Northern, Muchinga, Central. 
there there's more rain than here. You can do it here, but much more you'll be on the irrigation. You pick up the, the cost a little bit, but where there's more rain, you, you don't have to, you get enough, uh, much, much of the, 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 the water from the rain. Meaning that in terms of the irrigation, that you supplement is far less compared to here. And the soil must be well drained, not clay, which holds water. Must have uh, some, some sand. So when we are preparing the soil, we add building sand. Hello? Did you hear that? For purposes of improving the aeration <coughs> and drainage. And the clay content should be between 20 and 40 percent. Then you had the organic component, the chicken manure, the cow dung if you have, and let it compost for 60 days. That's your fertilizer. This is what I'd started talking about, the A to Z of avocado farming. So an IC, so amendment, we've talked about the rootstock. You hear this jargon, rootstock, scion, grafting. When you get an avocado seed and plant it, I can assure you of one thing. You will never know when it will bear fruit. You do not know what is in the, the genetics in the seed. And the fruit that will come at whatever time it will bear fruit will not be true to type like the mother. Are we together? Hence the idea of grafting. How many of you have done grafting? Fruit tree grafting? Powerful. This side, they are no farmers, eh? <laughs> <laughs> we are all farmers by birth. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Of course, we are farmers. <laughs> so we go to do other things, what? Civil engineering, and, and forget about the original. Assignment to the land. So the grafting process enables you you get a stem from a mature tree. You come and choose it on the uh, seed that will have generated set centuries of example, and you connect them with the set. That is grafting. With grafting, you get your fruit within three years. I have a story to tell. Six, going to seven now, years ago, we planted an avocado tree, seed at our place, McKen. The other year, it began bearing fruit after five years. More than 16 years ago at a farm, the same tree from my big sister in Mukulila. I love that tree, it's wonderful. 16 years ago I planted this, I see from there, as we speak, no fruit. <laughs> 16 years later. The one on six years is there, so can you explain? Very confusing, isn't it? The grafting changes all that. And, and the fruit will be put to size like its original plant from where you got And you select the scion, the one you fuse there must be of the same size as the rootstock. The one where you planted the seed, grows a set centimeter, that's a rootstock. Must be of the same diameter. And when you plant uh, avocados, you need windbreak around it. You can use a discus around it, or pine, or just any fast growing uh, tree. Uh, and why are you putting a fire brick? I'll tell you. Because uh, without fire, 
and without windbreak rather, when you have a strong wind and during fruiting, most avocados just drop, the flower just drop. So you put a, 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 a windbreak to break the wind and save your, your, your flower. Let me also submit that the, the flowers of avocados are not very attractive to bees compared, for example, to a biscuit itself, because lovely color. They are not really attractive. So to enhance pollination, fertilization, you get some honey and put in water mix and in your knapsack, spray and spray the tree. Are we together? <laughs> With that, when the bees senses something about honey, they come. And they'll be pollination. That's something I learned two months ago. From one uh, <coughs> Dr. Mutanga out of Kinsali. So don't say that there's nothing good that comes out of Kinsali. <laughs> Away together. <laughs> this is the doctor was in East Africa for I think seven years teaching avocado farmers how to grow avocado. He's an agronomist for seven years and he didn't even have one tree of his own. <laughs> the this is what I have learned. When we were doing some fish pond, uh, plate, I consulted some people from Ministry of Agriculture. And uh, we put all these things, and then the plastic very quickly started the breaking. When I found out, those experts, trained in agriculture, don't even own a pond. <laughs> So these days, I only consult someone who is doing it. The book and the practical aspect are part of the variant. Are we together? So this doctor from East Africa now is back in Zambia, and as we speak, he has already planted 8,000 plants. He is running. Says Bernard, all these years I've been advising and I was known as the chief advisor of this thing, and I never even had one. My friends are making millions. He's now planting and moving at a very fast rate. Why is Hass Avocado so popular globally? One, it has many applications in cosmetic industry because its oil content is very <coughs> high <coughs> compared to most of the local <coughs> ones we have. Two, it has a long shelf life. When it's ripe, you have it from the time it sticks, you have it on the shelf for two weeks. Most avocados, when you get them, how many days before they become bad? Three, Three four days. Mm -hmm. This one has a long shelf life. That's why it lasts. And the high content of oil, which you can use to, to make several other things. And of course, the trees will give you fruit for more than 50 years. Are we together? It's a generational investment. Who are the participants and what are the opportunities? Seeding growers is a, is a starting point. Amazing opportunity. Cooperatives, aggregators, those who get from farmers, aggregate and store in uh, uh, storage facilities, and take to the market. Those are opportunities. Transporters, suppliers of packaging materials, 
financiers, and those who add value. So you can elect one portion or two or three where to enter the market. And the demand is very high. At our place, we've had occasion to teach people how to graft. And that's uh, grafting lessons we're doing. We also have this small instrument for measuring the pH, the moisture, and the light that you need. Very important. So that you go scientific. Are we together? Don't just plan. Know that the, the pH is right. You get what I'm talking about when I talk about pH? The acidity and alkalinity of the soil. It must be between 5 and 7. Are we together? Below 5 is too acidic and, and it will disturb the absorption of the minerals from the soil. In like manner when it's too alkaline. So this small instrument is simple. You just push in wet soil and it will tell you where you are. You also measure the moisture content. It's part of the where we have the seedling propagation at Moriah Gardens and uh, shed net, greenhouse. The greenhouse is good because it keeps away pests and enclosed, and also there is uh, entrapping of the heat, particularly now when it's very cold. And on the right there, that's where you bring the, the grafted ones. Once they, uh, they've sprouted from the greenhouse, you take them there for hardening of the leaves. Those are the products. How many of you did soap making in secondary school? How many of you did soap making in secondary school? Grade 12 and grade 11, around there? Oh. <laughs> you did? Powerful. Thunder. <laughs> Using avocado oil and an alkaline, you can create an enterprise around it. See, in the next seat. This engineer did this uh, in school in the 80s, in the temple there, <laughs> and passed chemistry. <laughs> and that was it. Are you with me? That kind of schooling must stop. where you just memorize and the next day <coughs> I'm on a piece of paper. I think we need to change the way we teach. You come out of the exams, you've got an A plus, but when they ask you a question, you know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you learned? If I may ask. <laughs> Am I communicating anything? <laughs> We need to change how we teach and how we learn. And especially the curricula. What is the longest river in Africa? <laughs> how would that help me? <laughs> <laughs> how will it help me? <laughs> yes, I like that. How will it help me? <laughs> We, we have to change the curriculum. It's amazing. That is the process of making avocado oil. You get the ripe avocado, squeeze it, blend it, and put it in a drying pan like that, and put it in the greenhouse for three, four days to, to dry. To become like that, a low 
And then you pass it through an oil expert. An oil expert is something that squeezes. And the oil will come out. That is the avocado oil, virgin avocado oil. As simple as that. Are we together? You can use it, uh, I've used it for making uh, some uh, stir fry of spinach. I'm making some avocado ice cream. One pack, 85 kwach. Hello? Hello? It's easy. Where I come from, we call it chicken feet. Very easy. Our friends in the US are packaging that lotion, it's well known. Using avocado. You go to Soweto market where we buy the seeds. Most of the avocados just rot. Soap. So ponification, oil and an alkaline, avocado oil and an alkaline. And I can teach you very quickly now, this is not my, I learned from Professor Clive Chibo. How many of you have heard of him? Yesterday was making a very powerful public lecture government complex and now we can transform and industrialize and Ooh. he is a professor of professors. Ooh, that man. Ah, he's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Now he's well sought after. All of his, uh, his creative mind. He taught me two years now how I can make uh, an alkaline by picking banana leaves, drying them, burning them, and getting ash. What is that ash? Can you get it? In English, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's called potash. You know that? It's a fertilizer also. Potash. What element is found most in, in banana? Potassium. When you get water. When you get water and add to the ash, potash, you get your potassium hydroxide, which is your alkaline. And then you have your avocado oil, you mix the two, you get your soap <coughs> together. Yes. Is that impossible? No. Remember what I said? Not the longest river. <laughs> <laughs> this is practical, isn't it? No need to go and buy your soap. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> the, the investment required to do one hectare for three years, everything, 
is around $32,400. And, and through that, you are able to, to push this investment. The market of the avocado business at the moment is around 15. It's expected to go to 19.5 billion in the next five years. It's a global market. And the world's largest producer of avocados is Mexico. Do you know how much they make from one crop per year? Three billion dollars. How much money is government asking from the IMF? What does that mean? <laughs> You are not answering the question. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> but let me tell you, we import cooking oil to the tune of no less than $200 million. Salad, cooking oil. Fish. Check in the budget they presented last to the Minister of uh, Finance alluded to it. We imported it last year for worth $182 million. $182 plus 200 is how much? We also have been importing uh, onion until very recent from South Africa, Tanzania, and Malawi. Are you aware of that? <coughs> How do you import onion of all things? In mm -hmm. we call it canyon. How do you import canyon? <laughs> Just takes 90 days to grow. And Congo wants all that. Fish. And we are saying there are no jobs. I can't understand. <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> Farming holds a promise for this country. Because there are so many hungry people globally. Just two to three years ago, I brought some of my Chinese friends to the previous government who wanted to import beef from this country. Beef. Up to today, those bureaucracy have not been involved. You know in the China market? 1.4 billion people? You should not even sleep day and night to ensure that it's done, isn't it? Yeah. Our friends, Namibia and South Africa, very efficient. They worked out something. Just last year, Kenya, signed a deal for the export of avocados into China. Are we together? Last three years now, just for this nothing. May the Lord deliver <laughs> from this kind of existence and thinking. So that's what we create jobs. As we export, we bring more forests, we create jobs. And, and, and raise the standard of living. Just been tossed here and there. No action. They belong to an organization called NATO. You know NATO? You know that organization? <coughs> not the one in Europe, not a transit organization. <laughs> <laughs> no action, talk only. Are you together? <laughs> <laughs> Just talking. <laughs> this thing is again uh, quarreling with me. Just talking. 
I learned many years ago. This this statement and it has helped me. That action is the only miracle that transforms ideas into marketable products. But you require massive action. There's a book I bought two days ago, but I bought this one. It's called the Ten X Rule. <coughs> This gentleman is advocating the fact that uh, to move in a direction and achieve the goal set for yourself, you need two things. Two things. Massive thinking and massive action. Often we underestimate the effort we require to, to push and, and move and do to our target. Most times we underestimate that. The problem is not the target. Are we together? is the kind of effort, resources, and time and energy you require to push yourself and catapult yourself from here to there to make a target. And that's what he addresses. Very interesting book. And I'll tell you how I bought it. I told the, uh, one of our daughters is close to Gremata at the East Park. They go and buy this book from me. My mentor has recommended it. This is a on money. She went, they didn't have the book. They said they only had one copy in Kitwe. <coughs> and they told her to go there on, sa on Thursday because they'll bring it to the park. So I read the research, give them the money because I want the book. They said, no, just come with the money only. Yeah. Then I became wise. I found somebody I, I know in Kitu that same day. They kindly go to Gremata Mkuba and buy this book. Spend the money and he bought. And by 14.30, it was the only power tools coming in touch. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Mm -hmm. By 10 hours, it was good they had the book. So I started telling Tundi, you, you remain with your people at this point. <laughs> <laughs> For your first, may I have the, <laughs> the book? Are we together? Mm -hmm. Action alone transforms ideas into marketable products. <coughs> Remove from your vocabulary excuses for delay or for what not. Give it massive action. That's how I got this book, and I'm enjoying myself. So those are prospective markets for us. And that's the investment you, 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 you get when you plant these as avocados. In a hectare 400, in a year one, you may get around 150 fruits, and they can go to 400, 500, at $42. So the right side is the income there. Are we together? This is just one hectare. 12 months. And we are not talking about value addition here. This is just the fruit. <coughs> what then are the economic benefits of this avocado farming as an investment? Number one, it's a generational investment over three decades. And you can get up to 50 years plus. High return, high demand with depressed supply. Slow maintenance compared to growing of tomatoes or cabbages. A tree is a tree, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We had one friend of ours that was with uh, in school, an Indian guy, came to visit us, I don't remember now how many years it is. So we, we asked him, what is the palm? <laughs> Very funny answer he gave. He said, a pump is a pump, which pumps water? <laughs> Very funny. So this is the point. Low maintenance cost. 
compared to other other crops. You can also do intercropping because it's uh, five meters apart, isn't it? In between, you can do cover crops. So from the same land, you are able to get two things. Sunflower or soybeans or other legumes. Onion. And onion is a big thing now. And to run this, you need mechanization, you need irrigation, and, uh, and, and all those things. You need to be acquainted with the global GAP procedures, <coughs> governance systems, performance management systems where you, you deliver. And that you need to understand the market structure. Remember what I talked about from seeding growers up to the consumer, all those and what role you can play at a particular value chain. As I come to the close, I'll leave you with a remark from the current president of the African Development Bank. This is what he says. The future millionaires and billionaires of Africa will not come from oil or gas. They will come from agriculture. But I want African countries to be looking at agriculture as a business, not as a way of life. Nobody smokes gas, nobody drinks oil, but everybody eats food. So food is critical, and that is what Africa has a comparative advantage. I submit. Thank you very much.